<laughs> I was like, oh, "Hey, what's I'm up?" Right, Danny? Okay, there we go. Now we're my bad. Now we're live. <laughs> yeah. So Ten. Simon Simon says we're live, and we're sitting here talking, and we're not live. But anyway, uh, welcome back, guys. <laughs> welcome to another live show, Danny. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Uh, we are doing this live uh, as a follow-up yep. to part one of the painting of the Ron trackside figure. Mm -hmm. So in part one, uh, what I did was I showed how we... The most, most we, important part is the prep work. Yeah, the prep work. So we go through each figure, we remove the flash, which I didn't spend too much time, to be honest, removing the flash. What I did do here was I did... Um, uh, wash the models and then pin them and base them and put them on bases so it was easier to work with. So I have these handles and it makes it easier for me to work with the model. Right. Um, but today... Oh, the fingers is back on. Hey, the fingers. How are you? Again, you made, again they all know who you are, but again, those who don't know, I am. I'm all right. So <laughs> once again, we're doing a live stream. Uh, it's hobby... Sundays, yep. it's our hobby day. Mm -hmm. Normally, Simon is here building Lego kits for Conquest Lair, uh, but uh, there's three channels that we run as Conquest. So, yeah. whenever you see our dragon, uh, which we proudly wear most of the time, um, I uh, just we gotta, I gotta make more merch. Yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. it bigger, so I need to like, well, <laughs> change the merch a little bit. All right. Well, uh, every time you see a dragon, it's probably one of us doing mm -hmm. something. So, we have a Pokemon channel that's run by Christian. Who you've not met yet? Mm. Uh, there is Simon that runs Conquest Lair, which is the Lego channel. We do have Gabe as well, who's like uh, Hulk, who kind of jumps in and yeah. out as well, and he's also part of our crew. Um, and then there's me that runs the Stock Art channel. Mm. So together we form Conquest, mm. and Conquest uh, comes from a wargaming club that yes. we all started mm -hmm. about ten years ago mm -hmm. or even longer. And now has evolved into this oh, yeah, kind we, of YouTube. Yeah, you gotta diversify. Yeah, right? yeah, you can't be stagnant. Yeah, exactly. So here we are. We've diversified and we are doing YouTube. So, um, so in part one, uh, I showed you how we prepped the models. So we we washed them. We took off the flash. We cleaned them up, and we pinned them, and we put them on bases. And this makes it easier to work with, mm -hmm. right? Uh, part two now is how to get to a Zenithal Prime. So I've already primed, uh, I've already done the Zenithal Priming on, um, I think there's 20 figures. Yeah. So I've done 15 of them well, already. What, again, explain what a Zenithal is. So in order for you, sorry, I'm just going to turn the music down a bit. It's a bit distracting. Sorry, guys. But in order for you to paint quickly, um, the best thing to do is do what we call appreciate on a model. So what we do is uh, we we hit the model with uh, three different sort of primers. Mm -hmm. The base prime is a black primer. Now, normally I use a rattle can, so rattle can primer, but unfortunately when I went to the hobby store, they had no black spray paint around. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've ordered it in mm -hmm. because we need a lot of it, but they didn't. So what I'm gonna be using is Steiner Res. But that's the camera. Yeah, so this is Steiner Res, and we do have close-ups, so yeah. the cameras will change. But yeah. this is Steiner Res, so that's my black primer. Uh, so this is a kind of cool primer. Uh, you can spray it indoor, indoors, because normally with the rattle can, we, we couldn't use it indoors. Uh, also, and it's airbrush safe. It's airbrush safe, yeah. So it's ready for your airbrush. So this is the first step. Uh, the second step is we do a gray. So the gray is like your your ambient light, it's your mm. full light. So when the light of the sun is around, we, we are lit up completely yeah. as humans. So uh, the gray acts as your light. And for this one, I'm using a Vallejo uh, uh, ghost gray. So it's a very light gray, yeah, but uh, it doesn't that matter. Is. I'll <laughs> give a close up. So it's Vallejo ghost gray. And this is the second kind of- The second step. Second step. So with this step, and I will demonstrate this is more at a 45 degree angle to the model you hold the airbrush and you'll spray all around well think about it it's like casting natural shadows right because you, you look at our shirts and everything like that yeah it's not exactly black underneath it but it's just a darker shade than the actual color you see yeah so it kind of gives the figure some dim some depth and dimension it also picks out all the details so it makes it easier for you to see the model i yeah. always feel 
So that's the second step. And the third step, we are going to go with a white. Now, I use bone white, which is an off white. And the reason for that is because I want, want some warmth in the models. Uh, so I use an off white. With off white, you get warmer tones. Uh, if you use a pure white, you get colder tones. So uh, when I'm overlaying my color or my shades and I'm glazing, um, the tone the tone will be more warm when I'm using this. Well, primer. you don't want the hard color, right? Because hard colors just seem relatively. Well, no, thin. it's a, it really depends. It's what style you're going for. Mm -hmm. But I'm going for more warmth in my in my paint, yeah. so that's why I'm going with an off white. So this is a bone white. Uh, so it's not a pure white. I think I really asked you this before, but how come you don't base with white and say when you say you base with black? Uh, I've always uh, so well. Zenithal is always done with a black yeah. primer mm -hmm. because but when you is, look at a Zenithal yeah. model, actually, can we switch to the other yeah. camera? Let's go this so one come, here. Yeah. So when we look at a Zenithal model, when I look at it from the bottom, you'll see the black. Like if I turn it to the bottom, you'll see the black. And then you'll see the gray, and then if I turn it up to the top, you'll see white, and that's what a zenithal is. Well, again, um, it adds a little bit more, like more depth to the color, because again, you could cheat and just really just white primer and just color on top, but you, you won't get any of the highlights. Like you won't get the natural yeah, so shadow. Yeah, so this this is uh, we can switch yeah. back to camera one. So the reason for this is uh, so that we can lay color really quick, because now that the model has all the depth mm -hmm. and the shadows, when we paint, I don't paint with thick paint. Mm -hmm. I use very thin paint. Yeah. And what I'm doing is I'm I'm um, tinting the shade. So I'm tinting this model with with color. And when it's already got a Zenithal Prime, uh, the paint that we use, uh, first of all, it's a technical paint. It's mm -hmm. called contrast paint. Uh, it will automatically pick up the lights and darks because of the Zenithal. Yeah. So that's the reason why we do this. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to be covering today. I hope you guys like that. And for me, as we continue our terrain, we I will be building from the Warhammer 40k universe a Hammerfall bunker. Honestly, when I first saw this thing come out, I instantly fell in love because I don't know. I played a lot of StarCraft and Terran's again bunker rushing. Yeah, and it's kind of a cross between the bunker and the turret, and it just it just meshes so well. So I actually can't wait to build this. And if I build this fast enough, I will be also moving on. So this bad boy, this is the Battlefield expansion set, again from the 40k universe. And for those who don't know, we are building a ma undertaking a massive well, uh, 40k turret. Today, terrain. once we're done with, like, once I've done this, yeah. I'll take you for a walk around with the wireless camera so you can actually see the rest of the Yeah, like, how, what, how much are we we're building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that's the plan. Um, Chris, hey Chris, yeah, how are you? Yeah, us. Um, yeah, so that's the plan, so let's get to it. Yep. First, I'll go through my materials. Ooh, Slotcar Wallman has also joined the chat. Hey, Slotcar, how are you? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so let's talk about tools first. Um, so, obviously, uh, we can switch to cameras. Yeah. Uh, no, so you want that camera there, so you can yeah. close up the tools. So right now, like, I'm using um, my Awada Eclipse airbrush. Uh, this is a standard airbrush. It comes as a as a kit. We yep. both bought one, yep. my, uh, myself and Simon. Uh, this has got a three point uh, point three five um, needle, so it's pretty thin. It's nothing crazy, uh, but it's good enough to do what we're doing today. Right, Shuck so, and Dave is joining the chat as well. Hey, we'll what's up, it. Dave? Yeah, so uh, that's the airbrush I'm using. I've had it for a long time. Um, if you are airbrushing, you need one of yes. these. This is your cleanup pot. You always need one of these. Uh, we have an uh, airbrush station here. So it will be a little bit loud because when I turn it on, the fans will kick in and will start sucking out air. It allows you to pretty much airbrush indoors because it just sucks out all the exhaust or your overspray. Because yeah. the worst part about airbrushing, I find, if you don't have proper control, is the overspray. And yeah. that kind of eliminates it completely. And acrylics are not too bad, but uh, you, you know it's always good to have a ventilation system. Mm. And I'm not wearing a mask normally. No. Uh, when I am spraying metals, I will wear a mask as mm. well because um, you know metals have a particulate that will stay in the air. Mm. So yeah, so this is you know your basic stuff that you need. So airbrush, the spray gun. Obviously, well, you need a the compressor. compressor. Yeah, I want to but, say that uh, one. I have a compressor down here. I'm using a Grex, uh, but you know any compressor will do. The next thing that you will need for sure 
is your airbrush thinner. Uh, I use this to thin all my paint uh, so that uh, you know you you get the right consistency. Uh, Jack from Oregon has joined us, so hey. I'm from Oregon, but yeah, yeah, Canada. So welcome, thank you for joining us. Yeah, perfect. Um, the next thing you will need is cups. So I use these metal cups uh, to mix my paint. So as you can see, because I already did the first 15, there's already like mixed of paint. But I'll take you through everything I do to mix up the paint, the consistency and everything there. Uh, so that's what you'll need. You need that mixer too. I use a mixer. Now this is not really a mixer. This is uh, a sculpting tool, but I like to use it to clean. Uh, but you know, I also supplement with a brush as well. So like with the white paint, it was a little bit chalky. So I use the brush to really mix it in as well. Uh, so these two are mixers. Uh, you will need, so when I do color changes, I use Windex uh, to wash out the airbrush and I use water. So this is distilled water in a little spray bottle that I use. Why distilled water? Um, I like the way distilled water works with paint. Uh, sometimes I find that tap water mm. does have a little hardness to yeah. it. So the paints don't get... Um, I just feel like it's better for my okay. Hey, just say, if you're used right? to it, you're used to it, right? Yeah. You like using it, just go with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that's the bottom line. Obviously, I have water here. I have oh. brushes. Um, like I said, uh, the first color that we're going to put in is Stano Res. Uh, now, normally, I, normally when I pit down my black, I use a rattle can, but we're using Stano Res here because we can't get uh, holes on yeah. rattle cans of black paint. It'll be hard to film that, too. Also, well, I just film it outside, but in the our hobby store is completely out of black primer. Um, yeah. So, you know, we're stuck with Stein Res. And Stein Res is not bad because this allows us to prime indoors. So if you don't like to prime outside with spray, can, spray cans, so this is a great alternative. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Slot Car Wildman is asking a question. What type of characters uh, can you get? What type of characters? Uh, are you talking about the characters he's painting, or? Well, uh, I don't know if you watched part one, but these these are from one track side. Um, I got about two hundred figures. I'm choosing the first twenty. These are fifteen that I've already Zenithal primed. You made a show comparison between uh, before so, and yeah, after. So yeah, this is this is like what they are before, and this is after they're primed. So let me just show yeah, that. Yeah, I'll grab that. Yeah, so this is a Zenithal Prime model. And then this is what they were before. So this is just plain resin. Yeah. Right. Does that answer your question? I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the first color, like I said, is going to be Stano Res. Uh, the second color is uh, Vallejo Air. This is cold gray. Or ghost gray, sorry. Uh, now, the reason I'm going very light with my gray is because the paint that I'm going to use is called contrast paint. It's a very technical paint and it covers really well on a very light undertone. Are they like vampires? No, they're just um, the crowd figures, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is called a Zenithal Prime. No, no, no. Like uh, the figures you meant. They're not like, no, ah. these are just track figures. Yeah. Like, I'm so sorry like, if I don't understand the question. So, so th like, that, that's on me. Like, you know, this is a lady with a flag. Uh, if you watch part one uh, on the live, you'll actually see I unbox 200 models. And all those models are meant to be trackside models. Like this is this is a medic, right? Are those Sunday stock cars, are those 3D printed? Yes, they are. Yeah, they're 3D printed from Ron Trackside. Uh, he's out of the UK. So like this is a guy with a blower. So these are all trackside figures that will be part of the, the track that I'm building. Uh, they will be on the real world, world side of things. Um, so yeah, so. So I have an off question. How do we make the chat pop up in here? Just click on it. Yeah. So click on one of them. No. No, click oh. on the bubble. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah. yeah. Don't mind me. Yeah. Um, and then the last, uh, last prime or last color we're going to do is the white. Mm. And like I said, I'm using an off white here. So. Yeah, so without further ado, I guess we can get started. Uh, <laughs> Any questions? Wild, 
Looks like a stripper. <laughs> <laughs> no comment on that one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, it's not called Wild Man. Uh, I guess that's why they call you Wild Man. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right, so um, I'm going to take you through first prepping your colors. Yep. So I normally... <clears throat> so when I'm prepping my, my colors, I always use, uh, uh, you know... I'm going to change here. camera and I'm going to start building actually. Yeah, yeah. you build, I'll pry it, I'll just set up. So I just pour in some Sino Res. Uh, always shake your bottles. I just shook it prior to this. So, you know, I got, I don't know, like just covered the bottom of the cup. I will always add airbrush thinner to, the, to every paint, whether it's ready for airbrush or not. The reason for that is I like to control my consistency and it also flows better. <clears throat> and then we'll just mix this up. Simon is watching the chat, so if you have any questions or stuff, Simon will let me know. Yep. I'll do my best. And to what chat. we're doing here is we're looking for consistency so that when I draw up the side of this cup, it flows down like skim milk. So I don't know if you can catch that on camera, but the, the consistency of this paint is now like skim milk. So that means it's just runny enough and just enough pigment that is actually catching the side of the cup and not coming down. So that means it's ready for the airbrush. Yeah. So now we'll put it into the airbrush and we'll stop the prime. I'm going to try and do this without turning on the airbrush station because it's just a couple of models, but normally we would have the the, the airbrush station on. Oh, long time, long in place has joined us as well. Oh, Simon, yep. uh, Ivan, what's up? Yep, still in the bunker. Again, gotta love that. Again, StarCraft, man. This is what I <laughs> grew up with it, so I have to try to build it. I know you're building one as well, so and you are drilling the barrels with heavy bolts. You're putting heavy bolters off the flamers. All right, teach their own. So one thing that is really good about an airbrush is you can test your airbrush prior to spraying anything. So like I just tested out on a piece of paper towel. So I'm getting good consistency. My airbrush is working fine. So we'll hit the model. And this one is a pretty easy step. Oh, just 3B and Raceway has joined us. How's it going? Thank you for joining us tonight. I know what kind of spur of the moment or last minute type of thing. I don't know, unless you advertise it more than anything else. I didn't, I didn't advertise it. Oh, I don't know. Well, again, what? thank you for joining us as we continue building slash painting. I hate, so uh, personally when I'm airbrushing, I don't like the back of the, the airbrush on because I like to actually control my needle a bit more. So. Oh, you're thinking Warhammer characters. No, no. We're not putting Warhammer characters in here. We kind of got past that. No. When we start building the rest of the terrain, or the rest of the track, you're going to see a lot of Marines and Necrons built. So that would be pretty cool. But the thing is, most well, of his... already done. Yeah, your, your Necrons are already painted. The Marines, not so much. So you might see a lot of Marine painting. Yeah. See if you guys want. I don't want to do stuff that you guys don't want. Yeah, you may At well... least with this, it's uh, track related, so it's easier. Again, if you want to see it, just shoot the message and we'll get it going. Yeah, so we got a good coverage. Oh, we we'll put it to the side. Okay, so yeah, okay. Yeah. What's wrong? Oh, no, Sucker Wild was watching the phone, so that's why I couldn't see the models. Oh, okay. Oh! Dick's uh, watching the big screen and using phone for comments. Nice. Efficiency. With the black, I really go from the underneath. So I'm pointing below the model and spraying more because I really want my deep tones underneath. So, yeah. Why do you need more guardsmen, Ivan? You, like, aren't, aren't all yours painted? Why do you want to see watch us paint? You can keep calling me out on this sort of thing. Is Ivan giving you a hard time again? No, he's asking what he wants. Again, we asked the, the people what they want to see us do, and Ivan obviously puts Guardsmen on it. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, a slot car room flooded today. Oh, that's terrible to hear. I'm sorry to hear that. Who's? Uh, Wild Dance. Oh, no. Uh, what happened? Uh, kind of hard to ask. Yeah, my bad. Hey, sorry to hear that. I don't know what to say to that. What? I never enough Garvin, I just bought some more of the new ones. <laughs> no, was, no comment. That's because uh, it was on sale. Mm -hmm. You know, Ivan's a sucker for that stuff. Mm -hmm. We hear sale, we go run it. Yeah. We're still, we're still, we're still war gamers. Yeah. Whether we like it or not. No, man. Yeah. So silly. Like, even when I was at, uh, so our local. Shop Heroes World is having a sale, so even I picked up a model, and I haven't. I'm not really into the gaming aspect of it anymore. Yeah. But again, if it's cool, you get kind of one of those must buys, right? I was gonna say you love the model how it looks first before you do anything with it, because again, you hate how it looks, you're never gonna you're never gonna want to do anything with it. You're not gonna paint it, build it, even put it on the table. Dix has his 3D printers going, wife is in the bedroom, so he has all to himself. <laughs> Big screen and surround sound going. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jack is asking, do you have the link to the figure source? Um, I put it in, I put it already in the first video, which is part one. I will add it to the description of this video after I'm done tonight. Yeah, uh, he doesn't really have like a web store. You have to contact him through Facebook, and uh, he'll send you like pictures of the models, and uh, yeah, you go from there. It's print to order, so you know. Oh, yeah. Any discount codes? Yeah, not the moment, I guess. I I, I, I bought everything like straight. The retail. Straight up. <laughs> yeah. Um. I was lucky Ron did send me a couple of free models, but I never really asked anybody for any discounts because I know how hard it is to well, run a business too. To right? run a business, so I never asked. Um, uh, and Ron was, like I said, Ron was very kind enough to send me, um, you know, some models for free, which, which is great, you know, and. Uh, I've, I've found that a lot of people help each other out in this community, which is great, but no, I don't really have any discount codes. I'm really sorry. Actually, the person that turned me on to Ron was Slot R, because Slot R did a whole bunch of his figures first. Um, so he's the one who turned me on to Ron Pricecide figures. So what happened was, I just went on, I talked to Ron, and uh, I just... I think your camera's lagging, one second. It's fine, it will oh. always do that, because there's movement. Yeah, but if you gotta bring it more to the center, hang on. Yeah, okay. there, there you go, okay. Simon's keeping me honest, guys. Yeah. A little bit higher? More to, so more to the, more to the actual... To what? Yeah, there, there yeah. you go, yeah. Also, a key thing is buy yourself a client compressor because we have some guys that have super loud ones, and you'll be never really like you only you'll get to airbrush during the day because you really wake up the entire house by trying to airbrush. So again, tools, big well, important this part. Air, this compressor is actually on a cart, so it's making a little bit of noise here. No, but it's a lot quieter than some of the ones we used to deal with. Well, yeah, it's not. Okay, airbrush tech has gone a very long way from. When, like, well, I'm looking at uh, a Steinbeck, or 
There's a there's a new uh, compressor that I've been looking at. Hmm. I haven't bought an cool. airbrush in a while, so I was looking into that. But oh, did he answer Jack? I st yeah, we did kind of answer. We're gonna put the link in the description, like later on, for to get the figures. Yeah. But again, if you can answer for us on the chat, that'd be great too. And let's save a little bit of time. But. Yeah, one, one, of be, yeah, yeah. one so, of those post yeah yeah one of those post production things. Yeah, we don't know what people are gonna ask. Yeah. Are they re oh yeah so yeah they already answered in the chat resin based uh, prints. I'm a friend, Jack, and Saka Wildman. Let him check the name real quick. Yeah, again, thanks a lot, Dix. Answer, helping us out here. Yeah. Like airbrushes. I'm having trouble with my airbrush right now. Well, again, it's been sitting for how long? Yeah, I know, but it was so funny. I did those 15, no problem. Yeah. And now I'm having a little bit of problems with it. So this will happen. Airbrushes do this. Especially with Stino Res. Stino Res is a thicker paint. So sometimes you get some issues with it. So we'll just clean it out. We'll see what's happening. <laughs> Robert Hill says, I like racing. Don't we all? <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's all. That's the reason why we're all here. So here we go. I'm just gonna blow this out through the airbrush. Yeah, that's the fingers. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. People got a little bit of air airbrush maintenance now too. <laughs> yeah, there's something wrong. It's not uh, coming through. One second. Mm. I have to see what's wrong. Technical difficulties, but such is life. Welcome to airbrushing. Yeah. Sometimes this happens. Especially when you go live. <laughs> Spot Kawaba says, who races? LOL. Hey, man here used to race. Been pretty competitive with that as well. What do you mean? Well, again, I don't know if it's a joke or my dad. Hey, tell your racing stories. Why not? Well, what? Well, what back in the day. Here? Live racing, like real racing? Well, you used to, you used yeah, to live race. I've done it all, but I mean, not professionally. I'm no. But uh, yeah, I think I think all car enthusiasts have kind of gunned their cars <laughs> and done stuff. I used to race past, but. You any better? So you can't see it kind of off camera, but what Rolls do right now is try to refix the needle, clear out whatever's inside the, the lines. But yeah, he's just pretty much trying to work that trigger in. Because he was having some issues with the trigger a little bit earlier. Yeah, I am just asking my turbo Camaro. Yeah, that's when I was like 16, when I had no idea what, what PVC piping is. <laughs> I'm surprised that that engine did not explode. Oh. You going up? Yeah, I gotta go. Okay. Racing is racing, doesn't matter, class roll. That's what uh, Wildman says. Oh, yeah? Mm hmm? I will be right back. Because we have somebody coming and you guys are food. <laughs> Alright, 
Yeah, my airbrush is not spinning. It's so weird. It was working fine just a minute ago. Alright, see what's going on with this thing. So welcome to airbrushing. Sometimes this happens. It's not a big deal. We just gotta figure out what's going on. Either the paint is stuck in the chamber, which doesn't seem to be the case. Needle's fine. Just Clean out. Sorry about that. Missed you, man. Yeah. You gotta go back to holding down the fort. Dang. Thinking Robert's talking about one one maybe. Huh? Oh, I'm just reading the chat right now. What about it? Oh, dude, just uh, seeing what the liking racing comment. Oh, Dick says can't copy uh, the link. Yeah, Ron Trackside figures. It should come up on Facebook. And yep. So thanks a lot, Dick, for answering that question for us. All right, we got it going. Yep. Here we go. So back up and running. Yep. Uh, just wash out my hairbrush again. Mm -hmm. Again, as convenient as airbrushing is, there are some hiccups every now once in a while, but... Ah, uh, yeah. That's part of airbrushing. Mm. But it still does not deter you from the fact of doing it. I love the airbrush. Business. Back in business. Mm -hmm. There you go. So she should be fine to finish this last model. Come on. <laughs> it's there always the last one that messes up, isn't it? There we go. So when it's good, she covers properly like that. <laughs> okay. If you insist. It's for the viewers, man. I know. It's very hard for me because I don't normally. Uh, do airbrushing on on camera. So this is a first for me. If I'm getting it wrong, you guys can yell at me. Don't worry. Yeah. Again, okay. any type of comments, uh, the constructive criticism is always helpful. Again, first time what airbrush? It's actually yeah, first time airbrushing on camera for you. Yeah, I don't normally airbrush on camera, and <laughs> I'm not the best painter. I always say this. I just know how my way around the stuff. So <laughs> uh, I'm teaching you what I would do, but that's not necessarily like what a master painter might do but I know this works I've painted over thousands of models mm -hmm. and yeah. my work has you know I've won some painting competitions too so for Warhammer <laughs> so. even Dix right now is uh, painting trash side figures as we speak is he? yeah oh I think it's printing now no no he's oh printing oh yeah I gotta I got learn to read <laughs> yeah I know it's printing stuff. <laughs> all right. Well, no, it's finished now. Oh, it's finished. All right. Uh, I got, I got the five base down. That's the black primer. All five of them are done. So we'll move on to the gray now. And that's when you're gonna start seeing things pop. So, oh, oops. Careful. It's all good. I find that also when you airbrush it, the paint dries a lot faster. Yeah, it does so went, because the, the because there's there's air going through. So. I know when, I, when I'm does. hand painting models, you gotta let it sit for. God knows how long before everything dries. You touch it, you smudge it one bit, yeah. you're pretty much back so to square one. So color change time. Um, I always just empty the, the pot. I spray in some Windex. I'll close down the front nozzle here and then spray back to pull paint 
away from the needle and then we'll dump it all out into the spray chamber. So once again, I said that one of the most important things in airbrushing is to get this paint chamber. And once that's done, I will also just spray in some distilled water into the cup and then spray that out to wash out the Windex. And that's the beauty of having that pot system because again, you really have to dump it on the side there instead of actually, you know, just spraying inside. Yeah, some people will dump it. Yeah. Um, but again, it, it doubles. It, got their own way well, it doubles it. as an airbrush stand too. So why wouldn't you yeah. want that? So for myself, it's it's perfect, mm. and I like it. Um, I have two of them actually because mm. it's always oh. nice to have two. I think one of them was mine. <laughs> yeah, they both came the Iwata sets, yeah. right? And you don't airbrush. No. So I'll buy the stuff, but I won't do it. You don't paint. Period. <laughs> Oh, well, you did paint when we forced you to paint. Yeah. All right, so the next step is gray. I'm going to put my airbrush here. We personally don't 3D print our figures. We kind of just source them out to people. Well, I used to. Oh, well, we used to, yeah. I used to have a resin printer before. Uh, filament printer, sorry, not a resin printer. Um, but um, we used to mostly print terrain. Uh, like for war gaming tables, yeah. um, you gotta remember like we ran one of the biggest tournament scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had to, we built like, uh, we built like forty tables. Forty though. tables. Yeah, forty tables. So forty. 40 I remember the forty. No, it was like eighty man tournaments so of forty forty tables. Forty tables worth yeah. of terrain. Yeah. And the, each table was six feet by four feet, and we had to fill it with terrain. Mm. And uh, at that point, we were three D printing a lot of the terrain. Um. But then when we stopped that, when we got out of that, we I sold my 3D printers. We have a friend that runs a 3D printing company. Yeah. But um, he more specializes in, again, 40K stuff. But you can make always make a request. Yeah. Not sure what his price point is. Well, but. here's the gray. It's almost like it's a very light gray. And once again, I am going for a light undertone. And once again, you can see I'm pulling it up. It's like skim milk. And that's what you're looking for. So that's the consistency I want. That's what I want through my airbrush. And then on coverage, you can see it just goes over the black gently. So I'll show that to you. So that's like black and that, there you go. That's a gray going over. So with the gray, now I'm holding the figure. It's more at a 45 degree angle and I want to spray in like this. And my brush is spinning again. So 45 degree angle, we're going to get some. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> And you see, we'll start to pick up just the details. I'm gonna turn on the thing. So you're gonna hear a little bit more noise because now he's gonna turn the vent on for. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll see there's a. You can't really see it on camera, but a little bit. You see a lot of overspray coming out of it. And that's what that vent's for, just to suck it all up. Yeah, so now you can see with the gray, we got like the, the lighting is set, but you can still see details in the shadows.
I used to do model cars. I imagine it's more intense sniffing and standing on figures. Well, it all depends, depends on what figures. Because we were lucky with the ones that we picked up here. Was that, um... I got a lot less flash on them. So we didn't have to do what I'm doing right now. Where I gotta clean off all the flash, all the mold lines. But I find it very enjoyable, so... I don't find it a bad thing. <laughs> but I guess if you're not into that sort of thing, it, 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 it is an issue. Yeah, I guess so. Mm. We've been doing this for so long. Yeah. So. Ooh, question from Dix. Yeah. They all have waiting 40k of slot cars. How do you s do steampunk and slot cars? I mean, no more race cars and then steampunk tracks I discussed. Well, we're not really doing steampunk, where it's more uh, a scenic uh, type of build, right? Uh, who's uh, asking? Uh, Dix. So uh, the question is, um, how uh, we're implementing 40k with slot cars, how would you do steampunk in slot cars? Well, um, so the concept of this track isn't about Warhammer mixing with slot cars. Yes, we are trying to do that, and I do have some of the Warhammer buggies that Shotgun Dave is working on for me uh, to help convert them to stock cars. But the concept of my track is a journey through all my hobbies. So by leaving the real world, you enter the underworld, which is the Warhammer world, and you go into the Lego City world, which is my Lego City, and then you come back out. So it's a journey through all the hobbies that I partake in in life. So that's the concept of the track. It's more of a, a ride than a slot car track. It's a, it's a love letter to your hobbies. That's yeah. really what it is. So, yeah, it's an art piece. I keep on saying it. It's To me, this is going to be more like an art piece where we showcase the, the hobbies, the best side of the hobbies, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I'm trying to go for here. But steampunk? Yeah. Uh, it can be done, I guess. Um, you you know, find the right terrain and character, right? It's, it's a, it, at that point, it's just finding it. I mean, like, you know, if you look at some of the Karadron Overlord stuff. Oh, right, yes. Right? And yep. you can do the steampunk era using their, their figures. Because uh, there is an army in Warhammer, uh, more on the fantasy side, called... Carriage and overlords. They're, they're dwarfs with all steampunk. steampunk. Well, yeah, yeah, steampunk dwarfs. Right, and you could build you could build a track based out of their figures and their kind of style. Yeah. If you're a scratch builder, there's definitely models out there they could take. Like I said, Shotgun Dave is working on a project right now for me for this track based on uh, the orc buggies that we showcased in uh, Stream One. Um, and you know, he's trying to, we don't know how successful we'll be, but we're going to try. Hey, may as, well, may as well try, right? No, yeah. no harm in trying. Right, but, you know. Oh, I was uh, putting in chat, uh, Ivan, if you're still watching, can you just type in carriage and overlords so someone knows how to spell it? Because, nah, that's the main army that's more steampunk focus, and you can probably just take it off that. And maybe build from there. Yeah, Jeff G says, I wanted great guns I used for metallics and clear. And yeah, when airbrushing goes, gotta love the Iwatas. Most of the ones we normally use are that, right? And also they're... Well, they're, the Steinbecks are really good, but, um, you know... Like I said, this is a basic Iwata. It's not like a special. It came as a kit. It's one of, very affordable. Like when I got into airbrushing, this was, you know, what was av available readily. So, for what I do, this is perfect. So. Yeah. see the shadow 
in the flag there and on her figure as well. That's all created with the gray on um, black. As the grays down, we do color change once again. Questions? Yeah. Uh, okay. Stuck a while, man. I still agree with what you're doing, Raul. Let's try to do with my train layout. Yeah, nice. Nice. So you're doing a steampunk train layout? No, no, that, that's a different person. That that was a wild man asking. That's a towel roll. <laughs> Is it a towel? No, you can, it would be a, a flag. <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's a towel. This? Yeah, that, that's a towel. Are you sure? Well, if she's at a racetrack, they hold flags. So I could paint it as a flag. Oh, yeah, it yeah. Could, put it more in a... Yeah. I mean, I could make it a flag. I don't see why it has to be a towel. Mm. Dix is saying, I was just wondering, look at different avenues for slot car track scenery and story. No wanting to do all the basic race track I mean, stuff. Something different. That's a that's a flag, right? Or is it a towel as well? You guys are so only a towel, but I call it flags because, you know, people do carry their favorite team flags, right? At a racetrack, I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. But, yeah. So then, why is it not a not a, one of those? Um, yeah. Different avenues for track car scenery and story. Yeah, that's a good point on that one. What do you mean? Well, no, Dix is just saying like instead of like he's the one asked a steampunk question. Yeah. So I guess the steampunk story is what he wants to do. But yeah, again, I mean, again, but also just in general, what other type of stories for like how do you find scenery for more stories? Yeah, we like I said, for us, we come from a you know gaming world. I grew up with Warhammer, so I'm very comfortable with the models, with the, you know, and I'll show you what we're trying to do with the track as well in a little bit. Uh, so for now, let me just finish doing the last with bit with just white and then I can switch off this loud uh, fan and then we can talk and I can show you what I'm doing with the track and uh, yeah uh, three being agrees with you it is a towel uh, it's a flag yeah that's what I thought <laughs> it's you weirdos didn't think it's a flag make it a flag mind in gutter <laughs> what is again what is my mind not in the gutter I know. I, I, I'm clearly not the only one, though. Well, yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> or handmade banner, so and she's this holding is... it. Homemade. Uh, off white that I'm using. Off white. Off white. So I'm just putting about that much in the cup. And it's a 50 to 50 ratio for this. So, do about that much. This might be a bit too much. One way to find out. Yeah. Now, this white is a bit chalky, so I might switch the brush for the mixing. Too much thinner. Go back. A lot of figures are F1 themed. But again, that's what was all going in our grandstands, our pit lanes. There's gonna be pit crews, regular crews. 
Yeah, once you understand the concept of the layout, I think then it makes more sense. Um, so, listen, uh, I think a track is a very personal thing. Some people like it very realistic. I was looking to do something a little bit different, and I struggled with it in the beginning because, you know, it was... You know, I, I wasn't sure whether to do the Warhammer theme. I wasn't sure to do like the Lego City theme. I was building a separate Lego City, a separate track. And then I had a chat with Boone and Boone said, you know what would be cool is if you try and combine it. And that's what we've done. You know, we're trying something different. I don't know if it worked out, but it's, it's my track. Uh, it's my, uh, my look at the hobby and I just go for it. Yeah. Uh, once I make up my mind, I'm a person. Once I make up my mind, I just put my head down and I just go. I never really look back. Yeah, man of action. Yeah. So, and it's coming together. So, we'll see. So now for the white, this is the critical path path because we only want it to come from the top. So, um, if this is your airbrush, you're gonna spray. So like, whoops. Here, you're gonna spray directly over top of the model. So what I normally do is I aim down the model and I spray down. And you're drilling over like a five degree angle either way. Just touch the edges that I want with the white. So you can see, I don't know if you can see that really well, but the white's just covering the top. And well, compared then, to the other one. I mean, yeah, compared to another model or one that you haven't done yet. Yeah. That'd be the best way of probably describing it. Yeah, so that's with the white Zenithal on top, that's without. So I don't know if you can see the difference, but you can definitely see a color change in the model. Uh, Jeff G says nothing wrong with thinking outside the box. And yeah, wholeheartedly agree with you. Not everybody can do the same thing, right? Well, yeah. You gotta be a little bit of a pioneer on your end. Well, if we want this hobby to grow, we have to bring in other people from different hobbies or you know, let them see how their hobby interacts with it. That's the way I see it. So, you know, the easiest thing to do is, because I came from... Well, you work with what you love and what you know. Yeah, and because I knew Warhammer, because I know, you know Lego, yeah. it makes it easier for us to kind of showcase that stuff and bring it to the front. And obviously, there's, the best thing in the world is, again, you could turn your hobby into somewhat of a, of a slightly career. Why wouldn't you, right? Yeah, but that's not what I'm here to do, actually. Yeah. Like, when, I, when I'm when i doing slot cars... You no, know, it's your passion for it. Like you may as well, you may as well like, have your passion... Tra like, hopefully it goes to somebody else. Well, for myself, I, I wanted to combine all my hobbies. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't game anymore, so I'm not competing. I mean, I, I retired from competing. Yeah. Uh, but I still love the models. I still love the hobby. Yeah. I still love what what they do and you know the models they're always releasing new models yeah and gw to me is like the best pla like injection yeah, model make like the best uh, to me they make some of the best figures in the world yeah detail wise everything right. like that and again you like the aesthetic which is a sci-fi aesthetic that's not again that, that's just and your it's personal readily problem. available yeah. and like i'll be honest i'm not like a great scratch builder or you know like, yeah, building from scratch. I'm or... not Boone. Uh, <laughs> Boone can create his own, like, buildings and stuff out of nothing. You know, I'm not, I'm not Boone. Um, but I can still work with kids that have come out and have some fun with them. And that's the whole point. Uh, Three Bean says, thanks for the great how-to, Raul. So, yeah. well, thank you for joining us. 
Uh, the fingers have to think outside the box. Wholeheartedly agree. And the finger says, like, Sunday did with me. Which, maybe elaborate? Not too sure what that really means. Unless you know that story. Which one? Oh, well, uh, the fingers and Sunday. Sunday? Yeah, I guess Sunday soccer. I don't know. They probably have a little thing going on. I don't know. The fingers hasn't told me anything. Hmm. But... It's not kind of man. I just want something... When I use, well, I just want something when I see it. I I gotta learn to read better. Yeah. I just want something when I see it brings a smile to my face. I like different. Yeah. You know, variety, spice fun. of life, right? Yeah, and that's the whole point. Uh, it's a hobby, right? I mean, if <laughs> we're not doing reality here, yeah. Uh, these are scale models. Yes, some people do like it perfectly like real and, and i and i appreciate those tracks as well don't get me wrong i love like realistic tracks mm -hmm. they're amazing yes like mp's track is super wicked yeah. um you know the moment you walk into his house you see that track you're like Damn. You're, you're struck with envy you know <laughs> but um but again you know, that, that's that, good yeah, yeah but that ain't you though right uh, yeah it's it's a part of me mm. i like the real world that's why i bought like so many figures right um, I did want a real world aspect of the track, and I did, and I, and I am creating that. But I want it more. I want it to bring in more things. What I am putting together, oh yeah, you messed the opening part of it, is a Hammerfall bunker from the 40k universe. So, again, I love the aesthetics of this thing, because I gotta got reiterate the fact you ever play StarCraft? Terran Bunker, mix of a Terran turret. Can't go wrong. So, to our actual battlefield, these will actually be situated across it because the Space Marines do need a firing base. And, yeah, they, they look amazing. And can't wait to see when it all comes together. Yeah, Slotcar Wild agrees. Your hobby, do what you want, man. Yeah. Everyone agrees with that. Alright, and then we're done with the whites. <laughs> that is what separates your humans apart. <laughs> and while man agrees, right. imagination needed more in this world. Yeah, wholeheartedly agree with that statement. So I'm just gonna clean up the airbrush, then I'm gonna tear it down and get ready for cleaning. I'll show you guys that process. And then we'll go through the models, the Zenithal, and uh, the next live stream, I'll show you what we do with the paint. And we'll start painting them up, putting some color, and stop making them trackside ready. So, this was just to showcase Zenithal priming. Uh, I think Slot R did it with a rattle can, but I always like doing it with uh, airbrush because you have more control or at least I feel I have more control no I mean, the problem with the rattle can is if you have a bad nozzle on it it screws up the entire model and then you gotta use a toothbrush clean it all off that at least you know is gonna go on smooth yeah you have control yeah because I, I remember I remember especially with the, some of the old rattle can stuff that like, I destroyed like I, mean, I didn't notice it until it all dried up yeah and all those models pretty much gone to waste because I didn't feel like sc like scrubbing all that stuff off. I just yeah. I find that at all like a lot a lot less chance to screw anything up. Yeah. All right. So I kind of pushed water no through the airbrush. It's cleaned up. I'm gonna tear it down. Get ready for for cleaning. Um, I'll just showcase what I do. <clears throat> So these are all my cleaning supplies. I have brushes. Uh, this is... You might want to move that and then put it on main it's camera. okay, oh. don't worry. Right. So like these are all my brushes that I use to clean up uh, the insides. Um, I use this little tray to hold the nozzle. Um, so I'll show you. When you tear down the airbrush, 
Let me just show this space. So when you tear down the airbrush, when you open up the front nozzle here, right, that piece comes off. I open the back. You oh, go Marty Ford screen? is here. Yep. Oh yeah. Maybe let's change that. Oh shoot. Oh my God. What I do? Just click oh. back on, click yeah. back on Ecamm. Yeah. E click on Ecamm. Oh, all right. Command three. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I, okay, so I battled just, this, my we're bad. Tearing down the, we're tearing down the airbrush, so I removed the back, the back screw. That will allow the needle to come out. So this is delicate, so normally I put it away. Um, so I have like a glass container here where I put all my parts. So the needle will go in there. The nozzle goes there. The backstop will go there. Open this up. So I have a quick release on my air on my compressor, so I can quick release it. <clears throat> Marty then Ford, I, thank you for joining us. Open the back, and I will pull out those pieces. This is the trigger. So let's take the trigger out. And then opening the front here. So, and this part right here, which is the needle holder or the uh, the tip, uh, that I put into this little plastic cup here. And I normally drop in some Mr. Tool Cleaner in there. And this will help break down because it's very difficult to clean the insides of this tip. Uh, it will help break down all the acrylic paint that's in there and turn it into like powder and will start to come out of the nozzle. So that's breaking down the airbrush and getting it ready to, to go to the cleaning station. But yeah, I'll let that sit there. Oh. Marty's just tuning, uh, tuning in for the last part of it. He missed all the airbrushing. Now he's only here for the cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Um, yeah, so that's it. Like, uh, that's me tear down the airbrush. This airbrush will go upstairs. I'll wash it out, clean it out. Uh, but for now, we are done using airbrush. For now. For now. Well, with these figures, you can't really airbrush too much. I, I don't need to. With the no. contrast paints... Um, you well, can you switch to main camera. Command two. Oh, I'm command. still building. Oh, yeah, you can see that. Then. Well, you may as well, again, you have time, you may as well put a layer of contrast on. Layer of contrast? Hmm? Well, that's the, that's the next video. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, I'm not doing contrast now. That's for painting. But I have to go through and show the Zenithal. Oh, Marty Ford has uh, noticed off this Prime box in the background. Yes. Yes, uh, that is going to be one of my next builds, actually. It's a uh, Lego, well, not really Optimus Prime, but some third-party thing. You want to grab that box real quick? I'm going to show it to him. The Optimus Prime uh, Lego one. This guy? Yeah. No, no, up there, up there. Yeah. He just wants to, he, he knows the, the box. Bear. Yeah, the bear. Uh, there was one open. No, no, that, there's no open one. Those are the different ones. Yeah. And you notice there's a bubble view behind it. I'll just switch the main camera. Yeah. So yeah, this is the Lego Prime bear robot kind of thing. And it's actually listed on our store too, so... Well, it's not listed yet. No, this one's listed. Oh, yeah, this these are listed. Yeah, this these is listed. Are on the store. Yeah. yeah. So that's actually going to be one of my next builds on our other channel, but got to get to it in due time. Well, you... You're kind of holding back because you're waiting for the well, Beast movie. Well, again, I love Beast Wars. I love Transformers. Yeah. So, it's not that. We will be releasing that. Yeah. But. Steve Sweeney has joined the chat. Welcome to our little live stream here. Oh, you know, pretty much caught the, the tail end, yeah, tail end of the live stream. <laughs> I'm just going to try to get as much built as possible before we go off. All 
All right, so what did we accomplish today? Uh, this is step two, which is Xenothal priming. So I showed you guys how we use an airbrush to do Xenothal. Oh, uh, Steve Sweeney, did I miss out on the long sleeve uh, Slap Avengers t-shirt? No, it's out. It's on the site. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's on the site. So you guys can go check it out. We put eight new, well, this is one of the new shirts that's out there, right? The legendary mm -hmm. shirt. So if you're into legendary cars, remember there's only 25 prints of all the legendary car shirts. So and far. then they're gone. Yeah, yeah well, so there's only, only, only done four so far, yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, only well, I've done four. I'm yeah. going to do 50 legendary cars. And uh, they're based on slot cars, uh, race cars that have become slot cars that I consider legendary or people consider legendary. for. Uh, that's the whole premise of it. So I'm going to do 50 cars, um, but each print will only be 25 prints and then they're gone. So right now I released a 917. I released a single Porsche 911. Um, I released the R34 that you're seeing that I'm wearing right now. And I released the Superbird, uh, the, the Dodge Daytona. So, yeah, if you're into any of those cars, you know, jump on conquestlayer.com. And, uh, yeah, you know, jump, uh, go check them out. So right now, actually, I can just show a case it here, yeah. right? You want to change, I'll change camera. Just yeah. change camera. Yeah. yeah so... This is what a Zenithal Prime model looks like. You can see from the underneath, it's very dark. It's still got blacks. Uh, and as you move up and you come to the top, you can see the whites. So that's our objective. That's what we want. It's a pre-shade of the model. We picked out the details. Now you can emphasize this even more by doing a dry brush of white over. Uh, if you really want to pick up like sharp edges and highlights, uh, normally what I do is I'll do a dry brush. But because these models ha are not very strong in details, like they don't have lots of sharp edges and stuff, uh, I'm not going to do that on these models. I'm going to put the contrast paint on, uh, which is a glaze, and then we'll see what the models look like after they're done. But uh, for now, this is what I wanted to accomplish, this is what we've achieved. So when we look at each one of these models, you can see that they have some contrast to them. You can see the shade. They almost look like, um, they're close, uh, they're a lot brighter than I normally do, but that's because the paint that we're using is called contrast and it's a technical paint and it likes to cover over, um, uh, a lot lighter sh lighter xenothal than uh, regular paint. So we're going to test it out and see. It's a new tech. So, uh, so we'll see what it does. I'm going to answer Marty. I honestly can't wait for that build as well. So pretty excited. It's one of I don't know why this camera is jittery right oh. now. So weird. Anyway, it's back to normal. Yeah. Hit that like button. Oh. Yeah, so these are the models, they're all done. So I kind of hit this model a bit more than I would have with the white. Hmm. Um, I got a little bit overzealous, but I think it's it, all in all, it's still okay. Slotcar Wildman's uh, saying, I thought you were a Porsche guy, Raul. I am. I am a Porsche guy, but I rock all cars. I love all cars. I just got an affinity for Porsche, but hmm. my favorite car which is the next shirt that's coming out actually, is not a Porsche, it's a Ferrari F40. Now don't tell Massimo because he'll get a big head. But that's my favorite car of all time. It's the Ferrari F40. Uh, it's my dream car. Uh, I love that car. So yeah, anyway. The Porsche gods are turning the grave. <laughs> Ever been to a Lego museum if you are into Lego, some amazing stuff. Where's there a Lego museum? I haven't been to any, like, in, oh, well, again, not, in, not, in Canada yeah. or even Toronto. Well, like, there's the Lego, like, in at Vaughn. But yeah, but that's, that's just a Lego world. That's I mean, what, there's there's lots no, of Lego I'm not, you're not even allowed in if you don't have kids. No, you can't go. No, I've, Lego world, you can't go in if you don't have children with you. Oh. Yep. Well, I've been. Well, yeah, because you have Mia. Yeah. You have your daughter. 
I have no such luck with that one. Really? Mm. At least I know of. The models have quite a bit of character to them. I like it. But it's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, Wild Man wants to see the towel girl. The towel girl? Yeah. Which one? There's two of them. Uh, there is this towel girl. I call them the flag girls, but you can call them the towel girls. And there is this one. This one looks like she came out of the shower, I guess. I don't know. But I think she's holding a flag, but... <laughs> You guys Chat, came up prove, with prove them wrong. You guys came up with the towel thing. Okay. This guy's very happy. So he got hit with a bit too much white, but we can tone him down. Well, the figure is complimenting. Thank you. Uh, your work on the shirts is awesome, as he says. Yeah. It's fun. Yep, the F40 is an awesome car. Yeah, what's your guys' favorite car, if you want? I've got, like, a whole list from different uh, slot car pe personalities. Um, so, like, people have been sending me the cars that they want. And I have been accommodating. Um, now, the first four cars, I actually drew them myself. But I have since hired an illustrator to do a number of them. Because it's a little bit of time consuming. Jeff G says they're all over the U.S. Yeah, I w again. We're in Canada, so we don't have that luxury of having yeah. Lego museums. <laughs> if only. So there's the models oh, all yeah. on the top one. Wild man likes that. Ooh la la. <laughs> <laughs> Easy there. Easy that tiger. Yeah. yeah, there you go. This is here you go, wild man. I got one for you. <laughs> Well, Marty Ford says, great work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Area 51 has joined the chat. Area 51. And I'll Alex let you read that George. one. Look at the big... <laughs> <laughs> the big flag. <laughs> yes, George. Yes, George. <laughs> I'm going to switch, switch camera real quick. If anyone wants to see what the finished build is so far, because you're almost done, this is where I'm going to end it off. No, I'm gonna go show them the, oh, the right. track. So okay, you but, continue building. Yeah, but all I gotta do is add spawns and weapons on it. And so go that's, for it. Yeah. But so far, this is my bunker. Alright, so I'll take you tracks. I the assignment. You're gonna have to let me know if they if it's such a go jittery. Yeah. But we're gonna go for a walk. <laughs> you might need a cleanup guy, huh? I wonder why. I <laughs> <laughs> Needs to censor little people. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that one. So we're going to go for a walk. Hopefully this camera doesn't cut out too much. It is wireless. We did so. cut out one of our cameras. I don't know what happened So you there. can go full screen. Full no, screen. no, it's fine. We'll go full screen yours. Yeah. All right. Fine. Going to the walk in our in the actual lair itself. Oh, that's the main camera. It's gone up. Yeah. Oh, probably, probably went out of batteries. Or... Overheated, like last time? Alright, so... Um, I don't know the volume... I don't know if you can hear him. Because remember, the mic's here. Alright, well, okay, I'll, I'll talk. That's the build we have going on so far. So you can see it's a triple layer track. You can keep going. Yeah, so... Um... You can see some of the... That is the, going to be where the real world is, where the grandstand is going to be in our pit lane. So, yeah. So, about from here all the way back here. From, yeah, from there to there. Going to be the real world. Yeah. So, 200 figures will be on here. The pit lane will be on here. The starting grid will be on here. Can we change the mic to that camera or no? I no. No? Alright, well, okay. So, I'll just say. So, pretty much that's where all the figures are going to be, all 200 of them. So the pit lane's right there. That's where the grandstands are going to be. Can I? Yeah, just go. Let me. Yeah. Uh, bear with us for a minute.
What's the what camera is it? The Mevo? This is one of the Mevos, yeah. Let's just fix that. Yeah. Give us one second. Yeah, we're a little bit technical difficulties. Not technical difficulties. It's slight technical difficulties. It's technical difficulties. All right, we're back. Yeah, that's back up. That's exhausted. The battery's mm. exhausted. All right, and how do we now? You can change the mic. Yeah. So. Yeah. Bear with us for a quick minute. So, what do you mean? What camera is this one? What camera is this? Yeah, is that one there? Yeah. I don't know what what it is. Let's see. When I go to audio sources. Oh, camera shut off again. Yeah, that's fine. Testing. Nope, not that one. Test. What the? No, I think it's the first one. Hello? No, is it still here? Oh, we need to know what camera it is. What do you want to talk about? Keep reading the chat. Do you guys like the figures? They look good. They look good. Huh? Yeah, that's good one. So just check the audio as I go across here. Can they hear me? I don't know. If anyone in the chat can hear Raul, just please say something. Yeah, so let me know if yeah. the audio I'll is good. Eye on it right now. Can they hear me? Um, no one's answered so far. Okay. Well, how long this is looks good. Okay, so I'll take you through what it is. Um, so this is only the first half. Uh, so we start over here. This is the real world. Uh, so for about four feet, uh, there is a shelf that's going to be made here where the real world will come and ha overhang the table. Uh, here we'll have the gantries, uh, the starter's tower, um, the figures. We'll have the pit lane here. It's a small pit lane. Obviously, this track is not as big as I... It's not a racing track. It's more of an art piece. I have a commercial track for racing. We have so, confirmation they can't hear you. So okay, good. good. Uh, and then behind it is like will be like a, a hilltop. And then as you come around here, as you start off from the starting grid and come around, you'll drop into this fantasy world. So there's a huge drop in the track here. And we shoot right across, out through these, this pillar here, into the LEGO City. So right now the LEGO City is not in place, but there will be a big LEGO City in here and the DGT track will be gone. So the track you're looking at right through here is the DDT track. So that will be gone. And you go into the Lego City and you do a round around the Lego City. And as you come around, you pop out through that far end and into the war zone. So there's actually, this is a six by four. And here we'll have the Necron Immersion Army. So all these cases underneath will be replaced with monoliths, which is what the Necron army comes out of. So the track will be held up by monoliths. And um, the whole the whole base will be painted. Uh, now my Necron army, half of it is based on a bluish cork fi finish. So this terrain piece here will have a lot of oil rigs and it will be a little bit marshy and swampy and there'll be um this is where the necrons will emerge and we're moving over here this is the war zone so you traverse in through the war zone so you're going through a fighting zone here so a lot of uh destroyed buildings 
you'll find the Necronomy has transitioned from ethereal to more lifelike. So I have two painted styles of Necrons. Um, and over here is where the fighting is actually happening. So you'll see Marines versus Necrons here. Um, you can see this is a Necron Titan. He's not got his armaments on, but I have a couple of these guys. Uh, this is a Brass Scorpion. Uh, but yeah, you'll get a lot of fighting happening here. And then as you come through, you get into the Marine base. So this is where, like, you see the turrets will be up here. You can see we have some of the buildings that we started building last week placed here. Uh, you'll see Valkyries, so flying aircraft taking off. Uh, you'll see all tanks. You'll see Marines lining up for deployment. And then when you go into the back here, you'll see the Titan bunkers. So these are Titan bunkers. There'll be two of them there. And that's where the Titans will come out of. And obviously, this is all happening underneath the real world. So when we cut away from the real world, I'm going to have like a waterfall uh, and cliffs facing, cliff faces all the way across here. And then you leave, you climb back through. You go over the top of the war zone, over top of the Necrons, and you climb back up, up, up to the Royal World again. And that's the track. So, let me know what your thoughts are, guys. Um, it's a long build. It's uh, about a year long in the making. But we're getting started next week. Uh, this shelving for the Royal World will be complete. Um, I also have... A plumber friend who's coming in to actually put some piping in underneath the table and drill out holes. And I have a smoke machine that will create a fog effect or fog of war on the underside of the table as well. Um, I have another friend who is an LED expert who will come and light up a lot of the track, a lot of the underworld. Yeah, we're going to make something cool and exciting. But that's the plan. So let me know. If you have any questions, uh, Simon can yell them out, but I'm just going to walk back over. Also, I was saying, yeah. He's like, uh, now you can see why Raul does not sleep. <laughs> They're pretty much all in agreement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all in agreement. Yeah. The so. Raceway says, epic. Yeah, so, and this is our studio, obviously. Uh, there's another recording studio over there. Yeah, this is my basement. Uh, it's where I do all my shenanigans. Uh, this is the DDT track that uh, you guys see. Um, that I do most of all the stuff so far. This is a recording station. I was planning to do my airbrushing here, but I wanted to be closer to uh, Simon. Uh, so this is now a secondary recording station. DK Moon says, Raul has so many colors, he uses them to pull up his track. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. So, you know, I already have some of the Carrera figures here. I also cut my own pit lane. That's a pit lane that I cut out, out of MDF. And then obviously I have this. Uh, and then, yeah, I have my own gantry that I cut out, and I probably will cut most of my stuff myself. Um, it's ex getting racetrack scenics, which is what I really want up to Canada is very expensive. And then these are some of the lineup of cars that I have that I've just track side. Um, this is my downstairs collection and I have an upstairs collection. This is something new. I just picked up the RC chassis. I have a lot of F1 stuff. Um, so like these are all my F1s. But yeah. It's not a pretty basement. Uh, everything's in shambles right now because we're getting ready to move stuff around. You can see all the buildings for the Lego City are right, sitting right here. Um, here's the Lego City Skeletric track that's going into the Lego City. I forgot to tell you that. There's a secondary track going into the Lego City. And there might be a tertiary track, which is the Orc buggies that uh, Sashal Khan Dave is building. Um, they'll probably run on a career go. But yeah, that's what's happening, guys. This camera's pretty good, right? Yeah, there's a job. Okay. Um, we don't have a main camera anymore.
Oh yeah, we do. We just switch back to power. Back to one. Oh, hello, back to one. And sure. switch the source. Bear with us for a quick minute. Yeah, this one. Alright, yeah, well, so, yeah, different camera. <laughs> Uh, G. <laughs> Jeff G says, have a plumber run a gas light. Nothing beats fiery furnace. <laughs> uh, thanks. I'll try. <laughs> Everyone's got some weird ass. <laughs> but yeah. Hey, it means you're doing something right. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm just having fun. But um, that's what I wanted to do today with the live stream. Showcase the Zenothal. If there's any other questions, let me know. I'm um, always here, happy to answer. Um, I'm just showing you my process. Uh, next, we'll actually add colors to all these models. Uh, we'll probably do them in batches of five or batches according to servicemen and then actual fans because uh, they'll be painted different. But just let me know if there's any other questions. Happy to answer them. Mm -hmm. mm, so far. Then again, give it some time. Yeah. Anybody? Again, is there a slight delay? Oh, okay. Live? I, don't, I don't know. I know I know when you talk, it's at least like a 30 second maybe? I don't know. 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Anybody working on anything cool? I know Danny's got a new track, um, and he's working on that, and that's really cool. Oh, Danny, by the way, your your jersey is shipping out tomorrow. Thank you so much, man. Well, yeah, thank you for all your support for Actually, everybody's order. Yeah, for everybody who supported Again. us, oh, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, uh, it's fun for us to create these things. Uh, I'll be honest. Like, uh, Again, it wasn't for the, fan Again, it wasn't for the, the, the people. Why, why, why else would you uh, do it, right? No, honestly, like, uh, you know, ever since the live stream where I kind of let up, let everything off my chest has been, like, amazing. Mm. I feel so, like, ready to go now. Mm. So I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you guys showing up. Um, if there's any questions, like I said, just let us know. Uh, otherwise, I'll drop a comment. Uh, I'll drop a description below for Ron Crackside's figures. And Simon, is there anything else you want to add? No, really, no. Again, appreciate Remember, all the Remember, the legendary shirts I've brought on Conquest Lair. So, you know, uh, you can put uh, whoever's logo from Slot Avengers on your sleeve. So, um, Ooh, Dick says anytime. Can't wait for my mercy. Mercy? I don't know what that means. I don't know. reading these things. Oh, merch. Merch. Oh, there we go. <laughs> See, that wasn't me on me this time. That wasn't that wasn't a reading issue. Oh yeah, that's another thing. As I don't know if you guys like it, but we actually do custom gaming mats. Uh, so if you guys are looking for mats that you want to put, it's this right here. But, but imagine imagery. Yeah, on. show it. Yeah. yeah. It's good to work on. I'm not gonna lie on that, that department. Also, really good mouse pads because they do track very well. We we'll always have new products, always increase stuff. But yeah, if you're into, like, if you're looking for a printed mouse pads, we print these off ourselves. No. Uh, see, so here's a mouse. Oh, <laughs> nice, nice tracking. They can't see a mouse, dude. Just saying. Yeah. So if you're into this kind of stuff, just shoot me a message. Let me know. Oh, we'll uh, we will post the link. That'll be a little bit when because he's asking, still can't find the wrong link. Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, it's a, just a Facebook uh, link. Um, I will send it. I'll put it into the description uh, right when this is over. Actually, let me see if we can. Yeah, I'll just put it in the description of the video. It's easier. I'll make sure I put it out there. Oh, loves my hat. So, yeah, Raging Against the Machine. Still one of my favorite pants. Inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame recently, too. Yeah. Or at least nominated. Can't wait for that to happen. Yeah. I need a map with my logo, guys. Who's that? That is Dick. <laughs> you just want your map with your logo? Do you not want any graphics on it? 
You don't want your favorite slot car in the background. You know, we can do everything. It's a 24 by 14, so there's a lot of real estate on that thing. Yeah. Just let us know. And sure, I'll get you whatever you want, Richard. I think that's it, right? Well, I was going to finish Are up this little section here. You going to finish that up? Yeah, it was just the, the base for the turret. Oh, call it. These guys are ready for some paint. Be fun. Yeah, that's it again. We're about to wrap things up, so... Comment while you can. DK Moon to Necron's rule. Maybe paint a regular car with your Necron scheme. Hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to get the... I don't know if you watched La, Slaka Dude stuff. I'm getting the F1 chassis from Germany. And I'm looking at getting a 917 um, fiberglass body uh, to mount on Carrera ch chassis. And so I will airbrush those. Um, yeah, I have two different styles of Necron themes paint jobs yeah so i could do one in each one, in one. Each, right yeah. yeah why not because i have the purple and gold and mm -hmm. then i have a green and blue yeah theme uh to my neck army so yeah for sure i could possibly do that mm -hmm. sounds like a plan we're always busy so i don't know what's what's the next thing yeah this is uh stage two for the models and then stage three they're pretty much track ready um and then I'll see. I might do details. Uh, something that we're experimenting on right now is water slide de deco. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. What having uh, a stage? Having a stage. Yeah. We could do a stage in the real world. Yeah, we could. Right. I could do like a like a stage. Uh, you know, in the back, like, so the gantry is face forward. I was thinking about putting a parking lot in the back, but I could do, like, a live, like, yeah. stage. Just a little background. Around, yeah. Yeah. That might be cool. Thanks for the idea. I'll look yeah. into it. And you can use a course of Necron driver. How hard would that be, really? <laughs> That's easy. I have the night sights. Oh, do you? I can take the cockpit from the night sight. Oh, true. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah, Necron driver is easy. You just get a night sight and put it in. Yeah. I'm almost done. Just give me a minute to do this together. Eh. Any more crazy requests? Let's see. Yeah, let, let, let you run it. Oh, oh no. I don't know what okay. happened. Oh, no, he's back. I mean, because you, you turned minor. Yeah. What? I can't see the comments, that's why. Oh. I can just shut this down a bit. Right. Like, just turn it. Yeah. Minus the flag burning. <laughs> yeah. Minus the who? The flag burning or rage against the machine. <laughs> yeah. So it's good old social commentary. You guys, do any of you build a lot of Lego? We have so much Lego to build. <laughs> right now, we've got a... You're still producing your Lego. Yeah, I gotta do my uh, end. My what are they called? My my outros. That's right. Oh, what happened to the music? It's gone weird. Mm. So. Well, if you like these kind of lives, uh, we'll we'll bring them to you every Sunday. Um, if this you is don't, so far what I got going. So yeah, mobile turret. Looks cool. I like it. You yeah. did yours with flamers? Yes. Okay. That's cool. We have one with bolter. Yeah, That's no, but flamers are the ultimate weapon. Okay. Whatever. I love say. flamers. Yeah. Well, the burninator for a reason, man. Right. That's right. <laughs> Alright, I think we're done. Uh, let's just go through this real quick. Uh, course, the front driver. Minus one drop. Flag burning. <laughs> no politics, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with yeah. us. It was impromptu, but we got our Xenophile done. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have any questions about that, let me know once again. Thanks for hanging out with us yeah, again on Sunday. We love doing hobby on Sunday, so uh, we're always doing this on Sunday. So we'll probably have live streams. We're yeah. just doing hobby stuff. But I appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in. The fingers. 
Yeah. Always awesome, man. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, Richard, Dan, Dix, Tucker, uh, you know, Everybody, Wild yeah, Man. Yeah. All these guys are crazy good. Yep. And, uh, you know, all you of you. Again, I, I, I missed your names. I'm, again, I, know. I, I can't see a, so, a list up there. <laughs> Visit Slot Avengers. You got MP. You got Home Racing World. You got uh, Dick Slot Garage. You got Shotgun Dave's. Uh, we have Marty, obviously. We have George at Area 51. Um, and you have myself. <laughs> Conquest. I, I'm not in there. Uh, I have my own stuff. You have Conquest Lair. I have my own stuff to run. You have Conquest Lair. I have that. You're like, a big it, part of it. It's just, it's just me and, and, and Gabe, too, and, and yeah. Hulk. Yeah. But, um, you know. Uh, again, we appreciate something. everything. Like, all the comments, all the likes, everything. We truly appreciate it because, again, it's just. A little goes along. Hey, we're yeah. just normal dudes just yeah. doing some crazy stuff with hobby stuff. Yeah. Um, and we appreciate everyone's time. Yep. We know it takes, you know, time is money. And mm -hmm. some, one of the most valuable resources yep. in the world is time. The ones you don't make, get back, right? right? Yeah. So you spending time with us means mm -hmm. a lot to us. Yep. And we appreciate you. We thank you. And uh, yeah, till next time. Yep. Till tomorrow. For, well, for, for you at least, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I got more stuff to do. So I have an exciting topic for tomorrow, I think. It's a topic that uh, was uh, I've been asked to discuss. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll take it easy, and we'll see you then. Yeah, thanks Take again, care, Fingers, for all that, too. Again, love the views, love the comments. Uh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Later. Yeah, later.